The story begins with Takashi as he stares out into the distance like the main character of a Korean drama. He recalls a memory of a time when his first crush, Pinky, promised him that they will get married one day. But for reasons unknown, she was held back a grade despite being a straight-A student, driving the two apart. Somehow, she also ended up dating Takashi's best friend, Hisashi. Saya knows what he is moping about, so she calls him pathetic, saying that he always comes to his pity staircase in the middle of class whenever he gets down about it. Takashi asks why she keeps making fun of him, to which she replies that Takashi is stupid. She tells him to grow up and move on before leaving, but Takashi keeps thinking back when suddenly he hears a loud clanking noise and sees a man by the gate. Few teachers also notice and head down to confront the strange man when he shockingly bites one of their arms. The teacher groans loudly in pain until he stops moving. The hot lady teacher is relieved when she sees his eyes open, but she screams as he feeds aggressively on her neck. Takashi watches the events unfold and immediately heads to his class to grab Rei. Hisashi is not happy when Takashi is so forceful, but immediately believes his best friend when Takashi says that people died by the front gate. Rei isn't so trusting, however, and proceeds to yell at Takashi until he slaps her on the face. Finally getting that he is serious, the three run out of the class and get some weapons before trying to call Ray's father, who is a policeman. But Ray is shocked when the 911 line is busy. The radio broadcaster announces an emergency situation, commanding all students to follow their teacher's instructions and to remain calm. But the radio suddenly goes silent. The next thing everyone hears is... Get away from me! Get back! All mayhem breaks loose. Takashi and group run to a bridge when a teacher attacks Rei. Being in the martial arts club, Rei holds her own, but the teacher is a zombie, so it doesn't stop after being stabbed. Hisashi tries to pin it down, but the zombie is too strong. Eventually, Takashi clubs it in the head, and it finally falls to the ground. The group decide to head to the roof and see the whole city on fire. All hope seems lost as the entire school is now infested. Zombies are now on the roof. They decide to head for higher ground where they can barricade the stairs. As dusk approaches, Hisashi begins to cough blood. Takashi can't get himself to move, knowing what he has to do next. Unwilling to turn into a monster, Hisashi asks Takashi to help him over the rail on the other side of the roof. Let's keep building the drama and ignore the fact that he could have jumped off behind him. Hisashi asks him once again, but it is too late. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying the content. Saya and Koda run around while trying to figure out a plan. Koda suggests that they call the police, but Saya calls him dumb, arguing that someone already called them by now as hours have passed since it all started. Considering they haven't heard sirens yet, Saya concludes that the pandemic is happening all over the city. Saya thinks to herself how unlucky she is to be stuck with Chubby Boy and not Takashi. Elsewhere, the hot school nurse is attacked by a bunch of zombies, but is saved by Psycho just in time. The pair move quickly through the halls when Shizuka trips. Noting that her skirt isn't made for running, Psycho helps her out. Meanwhile, Takashi and Rei summon a squirtle to somehow kill zombies with water. While handing the bat over to Takashi, Rei looks at him with googly eyes as the Dutch hands. When Rei asks where they should go, Takashi says his house to get supplies. Rei is down for that. Back to Saya and Koda, the two find a nail gun in a classroom while zombies gather at the door. Saya is freaking out, but Koda is cool as a cucumber as he is a mechanical nerd who happens to know a lot about guns. He quickly manages to build a makeshift gun before the zombies bust through the door. After running around some more, Saya acutely deduces that these zombies are completely blind, only reacting to sound. When she tells him that they are going outside, Koda says he hates walking. Saya calls him fat and tells him to put down those Cheetos and exercise for once. While ranting, zombies begin to surround the two. Saya screams, alerting the other two groups of her presence. Koda runs out of nails, so Saya chucks some trophies at the zombies. She begins to freak out once again, but manages to use a drill to take out the nearest just in time as the others take down the rest. 
While taking shelter in the teacher's faculty room, the group are in shock as they watch the news. In just a couple of hours, the pandemic is widespread, causing mass chaos and panic across the entire globe. Ray grabs Takashi's shirt, searching for comforting words to ease the tension building inside her. Sai is not one to sugarcoat, however, highlighting similarities to the Spanish flu, which took over 50 million lives. When Shizuka disagrees and says it's more similar to the Black Death, which wiped out a third of the entire human population, Saya compliments her for being smarter than she looks. Takashi asks when these pandemics usually end, and Shizuka responds by saying that it tends when there are not enough people to spread the disease. After coming to the agreement that the pandemic probably won't end anytime soon, the group prepare themselves as they head out to find shelter outside of the school. The group encounter some students on the way out and agree to join forces. They pause at the stairs as they discuss how they are going to get through the horde of zombies by the front gate. Saya comes in clutch here as they test her theory that the zombies are blind. Takashi is first to volunteer. After confirming the theory, all head out together, when suddenly, Takashi decides to yell alerting every zombie in the high school and losing all credibility for being a chad earlier. The group still make it to a bus when they see a teacher and more students running towards them. Takashi tries to go out and help, but Ray stops him, passionately stating that they should leave without them. Just then, we see a boy trip in front of Shido. Instead of helping him, Shido boots him, confirming that Ray knows something about Shido that others don't. Apparently, no one saw him kick a student in the face either as they patiently wait for him before driving off. Ray guarantees that Takashi will regret waiting for Shido as he addresses the group that a leader must be appointed. A random fight breaks out as a random student shouts that he doesn't like Takashi without giving a reason, allowing Shido the opportunity to appoint himself as the leader to create order within the group. The students in the back clap for Shido as they are clearly brainwashed. Immediately, Rei leaves the bus, telling Takashi that she refuses to stay with Shido. Takashi chases after Rei when suddenly, another bus comes out of nowhere, preventing the two from getting back to the bus. Takashi tells Psycho to rendezvous at the Eastern Police Station before parting ways. Takashi and Rei are fortunate as they scavenge around to find a motorcycle and a gun. At the gas station, Takashi realizes that he's broke, and Rei gives him a disappointed look, saying, you're the worst. Takashi is a sensitive little boy with a stick up his butt, lashing back at Rei and bringing up Asashi to the matter. When Rei also says she doesn't have cash either, Takashi goes into the store to take out a loan. While withdrawing the cash, Takashi hears Rei scream. He finds her at knife point by a thug with freckles and braces. Takashi she calls Freckle Boy crazy, to which he admits to as he just had to put down his parents when they turned. Ray tries to escape, but is too slow as he grabs her plot, saying that he enjoys hearing her scream. When he tells Takashi to fill the bike with gas, Takashi cleverly throws his bat away to display an act of surrender with the intent of alerting the zombies in the area. While filling the bike, Takashi asks if he can let them go after he takes the bike, but Freckle Boy says he's taking his hot girlfriend with him. When Takashi takes a step forward, Freckle Boy tries to intimidate by swinging his knife, but Takashi takes advantage while the knife is in the air and points his gun. Freckle Boy says that the gas will blow up if he fires, and Takashi replies that it's better than losing his girl. With Freckle Boy helpless to the incoming horde, Takashi and Rei take their leave. In the morning, the bus is stuck in traffic as survivors rush to the city's safe zone. The police and military are blocking the bridge to prevent the infected from coming in. Meanwhile, Rei and Takashi narrowly avoid attacks from other survivors who want to steal their bike, suggesting that the world is beginning to sink into a state of anarchy and chaos. People begin to panic as more infected draw closer to the noisy, crowded bridges. The police are struggling to maintain order, causing them to take more extreme measures to deal with the chaos. Back at the bus, Shido continues to preach like the leader of a cult. Saya and company finally realize that they need to part ways with the bus. When Saiko shows her concern for Takashi, Saya tries to put her on blast, asking why she's so worried about him and not her family. Saiko is straightforward with her feelings unlike Saya, openly admitting that she is worried about him and her parents equally. Koda gets up and says his family is overseas, so he doesn't mind going wherever Saya wants to go. When Koda reveals that his family is very wealthy, Saya wishes he was just a little better looking. As they agree to depart, Shizuka says she wants to leave as well, saying that Shido is kind of a douche. When the group announces their intent, Shido, 
licks his lips as they are getting a bit dry and says that it's a free country but that he can't let Shizuka leave as he needs a doctor for his group. Shido approaches the group when Kota fires a nail and says that he missed on purpose like a true Chad. Despite being a teacher, Shido bullied Kota at school, so Kota says he has no problem killing Shido here and now. After Kota says he'll hold Shido back while they leave the bus, Psycho compliments him, saying he's a real man. Unfortunately, they run directly into a group of zombies. But fortunately, our protagonist makes a Chad-like entrance. Holy shit! Psycho says she is glad that Takashi is okay. Takashi returns the gesture. Both Rei and Saya get jealous. Unable to cross the bridge, Shizuka suggests that they should rest for now at her friend's place nearby. The pandemic has claimed over 2 million lives in Japan. Experts estimate that more than 10 million lives will be lost by the end. While the girls enjoy a much needed bath, Takashi and Koda bust open a closet full of guns. As Koda puts his gun otaku skills to good use, Takashi looks out to the bridge and sees that the situation is getting worse. A man is preaching that the pandemic was caused by their own government, causing people to protest, thereby attracting even more zombies than before. When the police officer asks the man to stop, he refuses, forcing him to take extreme measures. The two boys watch as the events unfold when suddenly, a drunk Shizuka appears. Shizuka is into Takashi, but Takashi is a typical anime protagonist, so he carries her to bed. On the stairs, Rei says that Takashi looks better when he has three heads. But then she gets sad, bringing up Hisashi. Takashi isn't amused, but decides to brush it off. After dropping Shizuka off, Takashi heads for the fridge to get a midnight snack. Fortunately for him, Psycho is brewing something very hot and spicy, sure to woe any man with her cooking. You mean this old thing? I couldn't find a size that fits me. I guess it's a little too revealing. Oh, uh, no. I hadn't noticed a titty. A thing. We should be prepared. They could come at attack. <laughs> but Rei is still by the stairs and gets jealous, so she yells at Takashi to keep her company. Takashi hates his life as he sits by the stairs quietly listening to Rei talk about how great a boyfriend Hisashi was. But Rei undermines Takashi again, comparing him to Hisashi and causing him to lose it. He yells at her, venting his frustration at how she keeps bringing Hisashi up and comparing the two. But Rei grabs his shirt and makes a sex face. Takashi stops yelling and makes a sex face back. Before anything else can happen, Takashi, being an enemy protagonist, tells her to stop or the woodpecker will come out. Rei giggles when suddenly they hear a dog barking outside. The streets are littered with zombies now as a large horde from the surrounding areas move toward the nearby bridge. The two look further down and see a man with a daughter. The father seems to be taking his last breath as he tells her to hide somewhere. When he passes on, the daughter can't help but to cry, attracting the zombies nearby. Koda is doing the best he can to delay them, but they know more needs to be done. Takashi decides to go out and rescue her while Koda has his back. Takashi gets there just in time. He cleverly jumps on the concrete fence since the zombies are blind. Meanwhile, the girls decide it's time to go, realizing that Takashi will need help with his exit plan. Down. They successfully rescue the two and drive out of the infested area. Surviving day two of the apocalypse, the group depart with high hopes in search of their loved ones. Thanks for making it to the end. Please give this a like and make sure to subscribe. Have a great day and see you at the next video.